Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub, and on this episode, we're going to make this awesome tabletop arcade cabinet. So one of the things that I hear a lot um, from people who have built my arcades or who want to build my arcades is that they really wish that they had a smaller option. And so most of the arcades that we build, either the full size or the bar top, um, they take up a lot of room. And, and you think, well, even the bar tops take up a lot of room because when you have a small space or a small home, or especially if you live in an apartment, there's not necessarily a lot of places that you could put your arcade. And so with this build, we're going to build a tabletop arcade, which is going to be much smaller. It'll have all the same features as any of the other arcades that we've built. Um, but in this case, you'll be able to get it out, set it on the table, set it on the bar in your kitchen. And when you're finished with it, you can put it away in the shelf, on a closet, or somewhere else in your home, uh, maybe even under a bed. Um, Again, this will have all of the same features as all of our previous arcades, just in a much smaller, uh, much more compact form. And I'll have templates for all of this, plans online that you can download um, so that you can make this yourself. So we're going to start things out by just laying everything out that you can see we've already done that here, um, where everything's going to go on the arcade. And then we're going to do this arcade just a little bit differently than we've done in the past. And that is I have actually removed the LCD panel from the monitor. And so this one will fit flush mount with the arcade cabinet top. And so it'll kind of have a little bit of a different, unique look. And uh, I'll show you how we did that because uh, it was a little bit of a pain, not too bad, but a little bit of a pain to get the panel actually out of the monitor um, because it was glued in. But I'll show you a simple way to get around that. And so let's go ahead and get started building the arcade. I set the monitor on my workbench and I removed the three screws holding it together. Unfortunately, the monitor is also snapped together, which requires the work of two screwdrivers to snap the case halves apart. There are snaps on all four sides of the casing. With the monitor halves separated, I began removing all of the electronics from the case. The only boards you need are the main board, the backlight driver, and the button PCB. You can toss the IR transmitter and the speaker PCB. The LCD panel in my monitor was glued to the front case bezel. I originally thought this was going to be a nightmare to remove, but it turns out some quick work scraping with various sizes of flat tip screwdrivers and a pile of glue chunks later, it popped right out. I tossed everything else in the garbage. I began the construction of the cabinet by measuring all the components, spaced basically in the layout I want them to be when the arcade is finished. I also drew lines where the underside of the body of the tabletop arcade would intersect to make sure I left plenty of room for everything and didn't wind up with a button inside a wall. I then spent some time deciding where the buttons and joystick should sit in relation to the monitor. After all, I wanted it to be comfortable to play. Okay, so I have laid this out on the MDF the way that I want it to be. LCD in the center, joystick off to one side, play buttons on the other, and um, the start and select buttons down at the bottom right underneath the monitor. But I've made this super easy for you because I have put together a template in Adobe Illustrator and in SketchUp that you can simply glue or tape to any sheet of MDF and just cut this out in a few minutes. So let's start cutting out the pieces and get this arcade built. I'm going to use my table saw to cut out the main sections. If you don't have one, no problem. The only tool you really need is a jigsaw to make this arcade. Don't fall into the trap of thinking you need fancy tools to make stuff. Better tools just make things go faster. Just use what you have. The hardest thing you'll ever do is just start. I wanted the corners of my arcade to be rounded over. I used my drum sander to do this. Of course, a jigsaw will work fine too. Speaking of, it's time to cut the monitor window out and the best tool for that is the trusty jigsaw. The best advice I can give you for using a jigsaw is to go slow and take your time. Jigsaws are not very forgiving, and when you go fast, a little mistake can become a big one in short order. I laid my tabletop arcade template down on the newly formed tabletop panel and tacked it down with some Super 77 spray adhesive. 
Super 77 dries fairly slow, so you have plenty of time to make your cuts and still be able to remove the template with little difficulty. Everywhere I need to drill a hole, I first use a center punch to make sure my drill bit doesn't wander. I then use a Forstner bit to drill out each buttonhole. If you don't have a Forstner bit, a paddle bit will work just fine. Okay, so this next part is completely optional, but um, I really think it will make the arcade cabinet uh, just feel a little bit better and more finished. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a router, and I've got a router uh, template set up and, um, and a guide bearing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to route out around where the display is going to go to make it sit down just a little bit further inside um, the top of the, of the arcade. And I think that'll give it just a little bit more of a finished look. Again, completely optional. You don't have to do it in your build. So you can see how the LCD panel will fit nicely into this recess. Okay, so as you guys know, I love T-molding in my arcades. It just gives them that retro feel. And so I'm going to put T-molding around the tabletop. And to do that, we're going to have to route a channel with the router around the edges of it. And so we'll do that over on the router table. Next up, it's time to cut out the base of the tabletop arcade. Again, I'll do this over on the table saw. I recommend you cut both side panels together, as this will make sure they are perfectly matched. I'm using the miter gauge, set to 15 degrees. For the front and back sections of the arcade, I tilted my blade by 15 degrees. If using a jigsaw or a handheld circular saw, just set them to 15 degrees as well. Using another spray and stick template for my plans, I cut out the holes for the power receptacles and USB ports. I then drilled five holes for the relocated monitor control buttons. On the side panels, I used these speaker drilling templates to punch and drill all of the holes for the speakers. Use the punch holes to center your drill bit. I'm using a drill press here, but a handheld drill will do the job just fine. I recommend using a piece of scrap wood below the side panel to stop chipping and blow out on the back side of the panel. This is a pretty slow process, but the results will make it look like it came out of a factory. Now it's time to start assembling the tabletop arcade cabinet. This is where things start to get really exciting. I use standard wood glue for this process, though you could certainly just use screws. Using my brad nailer, I tack the rear pieces together. Brad nails don't really add any structural integrity, rather they act as little clamps that allow me to keep working while the glue dries. These 90 degree clamps I'm using really make it easy to keep everything aligned and square. If you don't have a set, just use a scrap block of wood. Lastly, I added glue to the base of the arcade and then flipped it over and gently set it on the upside down tabletop. So who noticed my big giant mistake? So what happened is that uh, I was in a hurry, I had family over and we were cooking dinner and I did the glue up for the base and I put it on upside down. That's right, so the base was on completely backwards. And uh, I didn't realize it until about 10 minutes after I went in the house um, and I'd already put the camera gear away and the lights for the night and uh, I walked back out here and I looked at it and I was 
oh goodness, it's upside down. So what I did was um, just off camera, because I had to do it really quick, um, I uh, just used a hammer and gently knocked the base off. Thankfully, the glue had not dried yet and flipped it over. And so now it's together right, and today we're going to go ahead and paint it. So let's get started on that. I put a block of scrap wood under the tabletop arcade. This is to keep the paint from sticking to the paper around the edges. I like to prime MDF with filler primer. I have a video all about this. But in a nutshell, filler primer goes on thick and fills all of the little imperfections. After a little bit of sanding, it looks like glass. Now, the instructions for filler primer say you can wet sand it in 30 minutes or dry sand it in about 4 hours. Don't believe a word of it. Wait 24 hours before sanding if you want the best results. I followed the primer up with three coats of Rust-Oleum Flat Black. It goes on looking glossy, but after about 15 minutes it just turns beautiful. Flat just has that retro arcade look. After the paint dried, I installed the T-molding into the slots we routed earlier. Use a very sharp razor to make a cut where the T-molding joins together. Team holding just looks gorgeous. Now it's time to install the LCD panel. It just sits down in the slot that we routed out earlier. To hold it in place, I cut out a 1 inch by 12 inch piece of plywood and put a piece of double sided tape on the back side of it. The double sided tape isn't for supporting the monitor, its only purpose is to be a padded cushion for those times that we get rough playing games. The top side of this bracket makes a perfect place for mounting our LCD controller board. I put some small plastic standoffs between the board and the bracket to give it plenty of room to clear any electronic components and then screwed it down using some number 6 wood screws. I followed the same process for the LCD backlight driver board. I then reconnected all of the cables back to their original locations. The LCD panel uses one of those power bricks, and rather than create a brand new power supply, I just made a 90 degree bracket from plywood, and then some more double sided tape as a pad, and used that to clamp it to the arcade. I went ahead and installed the joystick at this point to make sure that I worked around it as I installed everything else. I bought one of these power connectors off of Amazon. It has a fuse and a power switch. I think I'll be using these in all of my future arcade builds. I used .187 blade connectors and some 14 gauge copper wire to connect it to a single gang outlet inside the arcade. This outlet will be switched on and off by the external power switch. I covered the wiring with some super thick heat shrink and then routed it into the electrical box. I attached the box to the arcade using two screws. Be sure to attach the ground wire to one of these screws. Between the LCD panel and the outlet is the perfect place to mount the Raspberry Pi. I used more plastic standoffs to raise it off the MDF for clearance. Next up, I mounted the speakers. Hot glue works perfect for this task. Some people don't like hot glue, but it bonds to wood and plastic exceptionally well. As an added bonus, it can be removed with a heat gun at a later date. These speakers are powered via USB, and there's a handy powered USB port right on the monitor's control board. I want to be able to play console games on my tabletop arcade. These USB ports will allow us to connect external controllers such as Atari and Nintendo style controllers. I used my Cricut vinyl cutter to cut out numbers and letters for my arcade buttons. These will go under the clear caps and indicate the function of the button. If you don't have a Cricut, you could always make these with electrical tape and a razor knife. Once the lettering is in place, the buttons just snap together. I placed all of the buttons into the top of the arcade to make sure everything looks right. The buttons are held in place with plastic nuts from the back side. Make sure they are good and tight. 
I mounted the EasyGet arcade controller next to the LCD controller boards, again using some standoffs to give it some clearance. I attached all of the wires from the buttons and joystick. The order you choose is really not that important, as RetroPie will walk you through defining the buttons. The monitor had buttons on the front of it to change settings. I want to still be able to use them. So I took the board over to my soldering station, flipped it upside down, and turned on my soldering iron. I grabbed some color-coded buttons from Amazon and some colored wires to match them. White is for common. I soldered all of the common wires to the common rail already on the board. I did have to add a little extra solder though. On the flip side, I soldered a wire for each button color-coded to the button it will go to. I tinned the leads of each button and then soldered the wires to each one. This is incredibly difficult to do with lights and a camera between me and the soldering iron. And now the bezel buttons have new remote buttons. I placed the buttons in the holes in the back of the arcade and pulled them through until they were seated. I added some retention nuts and then tightened them down with a 10mm socket. No wrench needed. I printed out and attached a label that matches the one on the original bezel. That way I'll remember what everything does.